Hey guys, Nick Espinoza, your chief security fanatic here, and this is your coronavirus tech news for Tuesday, April 21st of 2020, and this is all Facebook-based. Uh, now, we're going to get in a little bit here into politics, although, as you know, if you are a regular listener or watcher of me, I really don't dive into politics. I think that cybersecurity is agnostic to your political beliefs, but we kind of have to address it because Facebook is addressing it, and it's actually kind of important, at least here in the United States. Now, this first news article comes from Yahoo News, and they are saying that Facebook will soon let you know if you saw or interacted with a basically misinformation site for the coronavirus or COVID-19. Now, here's what's going on. This new notice will be sent to users who have liked, reacted to, or commented on posts featuring harmful or false claims about COVID-19 after they have been removed by moderators. This alert, which will start appearing on Facebook in like the next week or so, will direct users to a site where the World Health Organization lists and debunks virus myths and rumors. Now, this latest move is part of an unprecedented effort by Facebook, Google, and Twitter that includes stricter rules, altered algorithms, and thousands of fact checkers to contain an outbreak of bad information online that's spreading as quickly as the virus itself. I think that's actually a very good statement by Yahoo News. Now, Obviously, challenges to this remain. Tech platforms have sent home human moderators who basically police these platforms, and so they are relaying, relying rather on a lot more of opera, uh, automated systems to actually look for and remove this harmful content. They're also up against people who basically mistrust the World Health Organization or the CDC and all of that which basically opens up the first part of uh, political, you know, the first can of political worms here, if you will. That's what I'm trying to say is that trust is at an all-time low. And so there are going to be people out there that, let's say, do not take Facebook's uh, quote-unquote facts as facts. They might be facts. They might not be facts to these people. Wherever you fall on that side, again, I'm not casting dispersions or judgments. I'm saying facts in quotes because, you know, if Facebook is 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 together with the World Health Organization, uh, you know, then they are putting out what the World Health Organization is saying. And there's a lot of people that just simply don't trust that, you know, that I think that's something that we need to consider. And this actually dovetails with an article from Business Insider that takes it one step further that Facebook just announced because the headline of this this article is, and I quote, Facebook is removing promotions for anti-quarantine protests that violate stay-home orders in California, New Jersey, and Nebraska. So obviously we're staying in the United States here, and here's what's going on here. Facebook announced yesterday that it is removing information on its sites that promotes anti-lockdown protests in California, New Jersey, and Nebraska, and this is according to CNN. Now, a spokesperson for Facebook told CNN that it's basically in discussions with four other states, New York, Wisconsin, Ohio, and Pennsylvania, to determine whether planned protests violate these states' individual stay-at-home orders. Now, Mark Zuckerberg, founder of uh, Facebook, said on Monday that the platform Platform is classifying anti-quarantine protests as quote-unquote harmful misinformation. Now, here's an interesting part to this. A study that is cited by Business Insider, a Quinnipiac poll, shows that almost 70% of Republicans and 95% of Democrats uh, actually support these stay-at-home orders, which have successfully, um, according to uh, Business Insider, have successfully slowed the virus spread across the country. And so the question is, does this go too far? Now, obviously, we have a very independent streak here in the United States. And again, I am not getting, and I'm not getting into the politics of this. There are a lot of people out there that that have been protests. We saw over this past weekend, uh, you know, in Michigan, and I believe it was Denver, Colorado, as well as some in some other places uh, where these people are coming out, they're congregating, they are protesting and all of that. We've also seen counter protesters from medical personnel in full garb, masks and gear where the protesters are clearly, you know, just bare, if you will, and hanging out with each other. And so I think we are going to see a lot more of this, but I'm not really getting into the politics of this. The question is, did Facebook go too far with this? Now, the first article says they are looking at classifying misinformation or false information and then directing users to the World Health Organization. And then Zuckerberg in the second article says that an anti-quarantine protests are harmful misinformation. 
And so if you are a person that, let's say, went to one of these sites, liked, shared, commented, said, I'm going to join the protest in California, New Jersey, or Nebraska, and they shut that down, are you going to get that link too, as basically they are considering these anti-lockdown protests misinformation? Now, again, I am not speaking to the politics of this. I purely am asking the question, where is the line that Facebook has? And what is the responsibility that Facebook has? If basically all the scientists on the planet, whether it's immunologists, epidemiologists, and all of that, are saying that social distancing and staying in is going to help kill this virus faster, lower the death rate and all of that, and we have people getting together, is that something that Facebook should be getting involved in because their platform is being used? They have traditionally uh, stepped back and said, you know, we have the section, uh, section 230 rights in the United States, meaning they're a platform. Whatever you do on the platform, unless it's illegal, they are not held liable for, and now they are diving in to say, we are taking some responsibility. Now, I could also make this argument for, let's say, presidential elections, where we have seen these free platforms being used to sow disinformation in elections, that has been proven over and over and over. Again, not getting political, not adjudicating that because I actually have the the the, the actual ads, all 3,500 of them, from the Internet Research Agency. But it's an interesting question, and I think it's something that we really need to talk about. You know, in in terms of where the line is for Facebook in terms of responsibility, and we can't have it both ways. Either Facebook has to moderate content, or they don't. And if they get selective with it, well, then that opens up a whole can of worms. That we're now talking about. So I'm very curious to know what your thoughts are on this. Again, putting politics aside purely on what Facebook is doing. And that is your coronavirus tech news of the day for uh, April 21st, 2020. I hope you guys are healthy. And please like, share, follow me here on Facebook and Twitter at Nick AESP. And please feel free to subscribe to me at YouTube as well. And as always, stay safe and stay online. Thanks, guys.